The A320 has fire detection and extinguishing systems for the engines and APU, smoke detection in the avionics bay, smoke detection and fire extinguishing systems in the cargo compartments and lavatories, portable fire extinguishers for the flight compartment and the cabin. The engines and APU have a fire detection system. Each system has two identical detection loops, A and B, mounted in parallel. Each detection loop is connected, on each engine, to three fire detectors. One in the engine pylon nacelle, one in the engine core, and one in the engine fan section. On the APU compartment, to one fire detector. A fire detection unit, FDU, which generates fire warnings when a loop A detector and a loop B detector subject to heat, or one loop detects a fire with the second loop declared inoperative, or both loops are declared inoperative within five seconds. Each engine is equipped with two extinguisher bottles. The discharge of the bottles is activated by a related agent push button. These push buttons are located on the fire panel on the overhead panel. Note, the agent push buttons are active only if their related fire push button has been released out. For the APU, there is one fire extinguisher bottle. Its discharge is activated either by an agent push button, provided the APU fire push button has been released out, or automatically, if there is an APU fire, when the aircraft is on the ground, and provided the DC bat bus is still supplied. The guarded fire push buttons give a fire indication and enable, when released out, the related system to be isolated and the agent push buttons to be active. Note, each fire indication has two sets of four red bulbs. Each set is triggered by a fire detection loop. The test buttons are used to test the respective fire detection and extinguishing system operation. When it is pressed and until it is released, the red fire push light comes on the white squib, and the amber dish lights come on, and the ECAM warnings are activated. Note, if the fire test is performed on ground, with only batteries supplying the electrical network, the white squib, and the amber dish lights come on, and without ECAM warnings, the red fire push light comes on, but partially, as one set of red bulbs is not electrically available. In addition to the indications of the engine fire panel, on the engine panel, installed on the pedestal, there is a fire light for each engine. These lights identify which engine is on fire. On the external power panel, for the APU, there is an additional APU fire light and a guarded APU shutoff push button. This push button allows the ground crew to shut down the APU when, in case of APU fire, the automatic shutdown did not work. A smoke detection system is provided for the avionics. Its detector is located in the air extraction duct. The indications for avionics smoke are located on two panels in the cockpit. The emergency electrical power panel, in order to electrically isolate the faulty equipment, refer to the electrical system, and the ventilation panel, in order to evacuate the smoke, refer to the ventilation system. The lavatory smoke detection system consists of one smoke detector in each lavatory linked to the cabin intercommunication data system. CIDS, the CIDS transmits the signals to the flight warning computer, 
for warnings in the cockpit and general syndication in the cabin. In addition, each lavatory waste bin has an automatic fire extinguishing system. Cavities are installed in the cargo compartment ceiling panels. There is one cavity in the forward compartment and two in the aft compartment. Each cavity has two smoke detectors. Each smoke detector is linked to one of the two detection loops. The CIDS receives signals from the detectors and sends them to the flight warning computer for display in the cockpit. Smoke warnings are activated if in one cavity both smoke detectors detect the smoke or one smoke detector detects the smoke with the other detector declared inoperative. Related cargo smoke detection is indicated on a cargo smoke panel installed on the overhead panel. Depending on the version, the installed panel can be, as shown, for one bottle version or for two bottles version. Refer to your documentation. The cargo smoke panel also has for the one bottle version, two guarded dish push buttons. Each push button allows the complete discharge of the fire extinguisher bottle into the related cargo compartment through a nozzle installed in each cavity. So, the forward dish push button will draw the bottle contents into the forward compartment via one nozzle. Or the aft dish push button will draw the bottle contents into the aft compartment via two nozzles. Note, as the bottle contents have been completely discharged into a cargo compartment, both amber dish lights come on. The cargo smoke panel also has, for the two bottles version, two guarded dish toggle switches. Each toggle switch allows the complete discharge of the fire extinguisher bottles into the related cargo compartment through a nozzle installed in each cavity. So, the forward toggle switch will draw the bottle 1 contents and the bottle 2 contents into the forward compartment via one nozzle. Or the aft toggle switch will draw the bottle 1 contents and the bottle 2 contents into the aft compartment via two nozzles. Note. When the bottle contents have been completely discharged into a cargo compartment, the related amber dish light comes on. The bottle 1 will discharge within 60 seconds. The amber dish agent 2 light comes on one hour after the bottle 1 discharge and goes off when the agent 2 has been selected for discharge. Also, the bottle 2 discharges slowly within around 90 minutes, ensuring sufficient agent concentration for 205 minutes. The cargo smoke panel has also a test push button. When pressed and held for at least 3 seconds, it turns on the amber dish lights and tests the smoke detectors in sequence. It turns on the red smoke lights and ECAM warnings twice. And it closes the cargo ventilation isolation valves if installed in the forward and aft cargo compartment, as shown on the ECAM COND page. At the end of the test, they reopen automatically. When the test push button is released, the amber dish lights go off. During the walk around, you have to check that the APU fire extinguisher overpressure indication red disc is in place. This is an indication that the fire bottle has not been discharged overboard due to bottle overpressure. Note, there is no such indication for the engine fire bottles. Finally, there are portable fire extinguishers in the cockpit and the cabin. 
The number, type and locations depend on the different customer layouts. As an example, let's now study a cargo smoke procedure. On the engine warning display, the message forward cargo smoke with the related procedure is displayed. On the installed cargo smoke panel, the related smoke light comes on, and the ECAM cont page shows the automatic closure of the related cargo ventilation isolation valves. We did the first action for you. Then, we have also Discharge the bottle, or the first bottle, into the related cargo compartment. Note. The bottle, or the first bottle will be discharged within around 60 seconds. This is confirmed by the related amber dish light. The ECAM has been cleared for you. Expect the smoke warning to remain on, after the agent discharge and even if the smoke source has been extinguished. Because, the gas from the smoke source are not evacuated, and the smoke detectors are also sensitive to the extinguishing agent. Only on the two bottles version, one hour later, a new caution is triggered, asking you to discharge the second bottle. When the second bottle has been selected for discharge, the caution is cleared, and due to the slow discharge, the Amber Dish 2 light will come on only around 40 minutes after the agent to activation.